the crown chakra located right at the top of the middle of the head. Um, this is basically your spiritual antenna. That's the way I see it. Uh, this chakra governs your connection to your soul and to all kinds of higher dimensional beings, such as angels, masters, galactic spirit guides. Um, it's also the gateway for higher frequencies uh, to come in and start integrating with your bio system. Um, it regulates the pineal gland, and that is a gland that is a strong connection with your psychic abilities. Um, the color rays are violet, purple, white, or gold. And if you have an imbalance here, it can manifest as a feeling of disconnection from spirit or from your body, uh, a sense of depression or a lack of direction or feeling just kind of like, I don't know why I'm here, uh, not in touch with your inspiration or your purpose. Um, it can manifest again as headaches uh, or brain or nervous system issues. So and there's a lot of great stones for the crown, but I really wanted to talk about Alestial Quartz because it's one of my favorites. So Alestial Quartz is a master quartz formation. It's one of the 12 master crystals as defined by Katrina Raphael. She was my teacher um, who I got my training from and she wrote the book on this. So um, the Alestial Quartz, uh, here's how you identify it. Here's my favorite one that I own. It's a quartz crystal that has an etched or a layered appearance. I don't know if you can see it well here, but there's lots of layers inside of this crystal of different things. It looks like a circuitry or something. Or it can also look like this, uh, a quartz crystal that has points or terminations all over the face and the body of the crystal. So this one has little crystal points all over it. So that's an celestial quartz. And I love what Robert Simmons has to say about Alestial Quartz and it 100% resonates with my experience. He describes them as multi-dimensional switchboards that can link multiple timelines, dimensions, and levels of consciousness to one another. And he also says they're the perfect medium for light codes, love, and information to be transferred from the higher dimensional planes into the human body consciousness and experience. So the light code thing, I totally resonate with what he's saying here. Um, I don't know, you guys may have had this experience. Maybe you were doing a meditation and you got pretty deep and you were going from alpha to theta. Or I've experienced this too when I'm falling asleep and I'm in the twilight state, kind of between awake and asleep, the hypnagogic state of consciousness. And all of a sudden you start seeing the most bizarre stuff, right? And it looks like like it could be like these geometric symbols all over the place. Uh, it, it could look like um, some kind of writing in another language. Sometimes it looks like long complex mathematical equations, uh, dots and dashes and Morse code looking stuff. But it's like all this information you can start to see. And um, I believe those are light codes. And for me, what a light code is, it's like seeds of etheric instructions that are integrating with the crown and the higher chakras. And the purpose is to upgrade your bio system. So I believe these codes are coming in to awaken the higher chakras, the glands, the subtle energetic circuitry in the head and the psychic senses. So anytime I see that stuff, I'm really happy because I don't know exactly what it means sometimes, but usually after I see it, there's an upshift in my psychic abilities. Well, you know, that, that reminds me of what you were just talking about, the Schumann resonance. And what we see like right here are these little dots like Morse code. That's oh, going on. Yeah. It's really interesting. At the, that's at the 24 marker. Um, Earth's resonance is at 7.83. We have a line right here, which we have more dot, dot, Morse code kind of thing going on Ooh, right that. there at 16. And then when you triple that, it's even more. So I've always said there's something, there's something deeper that's going on with these little dots. And I think you're hitting the nail on the head. That's really interesting. There could be some coded information there. Yep. And, and that we can get just by looking way. at it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, there's so much going on there, I think. Mm -hmm. So very, very interesting. Um, so yeah, the first time I had a very vivid experience of seeing light codes was when I was meditating with this big guy on my couch. I was zoning out. And I was kind of getting in that zone where I was falling asleep, but I was still very conscious. 
Next thing you know, I saw it looked like somebody dumped a math textbook into my head. I saw line after line after line of these complex mathematical equations that I don't know what the heck it meant. Okay, because I don't know math. I mean, I'm good with words, but I don't know anything about math. And it just kept coming. It just kept downloading into my head. And I'm just like watching the math show. And then finally that kind of chilled out and it stopped. And then uh, another wave came in and this looked like writing, but it looked like some other language. I didn't know what it was, but it looked like a language. And then later it something dawned on me. It's like, I've seen that before. And then I remember where I saw it. Um, I was speaking at a conference in Pagosa Springs and it was a galactic ET conference. And we had this amazing speaker who was like a representative of the Arcturians. She had all the Arcturian language written on a board and she showed it to us. And I'm like, that's what I saw. It was some form of an Arcturian language. So after that, I'm like, yeah, this is the stone that brings in those light codes. So if you are interested in bringing a download in like this and maybe being able to see or sense it, work with Celestial Quartz. Um, I also love what Naisha Asian had to say about this stone, because she says that um, Celestial Quartz um, connects to the full spectrum of light, the highest spectrums of light, and then it steps that energy down and it regulates it and it brings in an infusion that's the perfect amount and level that you can easily and safely integrate in that moment in time. And so it brings you just the right amount of codes, not too little, not too much, because I think we've all had the experience of being overloaded with too much energy and that's not very comfortable because it feels like it might fry your system. <laughs> so if you work with the less steel quartz, you're going to get the perfect amount and in infusion of light. And it's always going to adjust as you're able to handle more that uh, crystal is going to bring in more. So it's going to be perfect for the long haul. Um, this is one that can help with brain issues. It can help to, if you've had any kind of brain damage, it heals the brain and it upgrades the brain. Um, in the healing sessions with people, sometimes I get the sense that this stone is like working on the subtle energetic circuitry and doing some rewiring um, and, and, and kind of um, helping to enhance new neural nets and coming into place. So I think it really upgrades the brain. Um, but it's also just a great uh, crystal that you can work with over any chakra, again, because it's going to open and clear on a very, very deep level. This thing goes in there and it cleans house, man. So it'll go to the root causes of whatever your issues are, and it just clears out the patterns. So highly recommend Alestial Quartz. It's a superstar. And then the other one that I would like to cover today is another beautiful one. So this is Apophyllite. I don't know if you can just see or sense what a beautiful high vibration crystal this is. It's got an energy that is very sharp and very clear and very pure and very high. It's got a really refined vibration. Um, it forms into all of these beautiful shapes. Here's another one. Just very beautiful and sparkly, very happy stones. Now, Apophyllite has two different things going on with it. Um, one is that it has a high water content. We like stones with a high water content because they're good um, conductors and transmitters of energy and especially light codes from the higher planes into the crown and into the brain. Uh, so we like the water content. The water is also cleansing and purifying. But then um, this stone is highly geometric. As you can see, this one um, is forming into some pyramid shapes. Um, they often form into pyramid shapes or even into cubes. And we like it when we have a pyramid shape because the pyramid will actually amplify and focus your consciousness so that it's easier to tune into the subtle realms. Um, when you have the square or the cube shape, this is a more masculine shape. So it's going to actually help to ground and stabilize the higher frequencies so that you can easily process and integrate the incoming light codes. So it's good to have the pyramids and the cubes in a crystalline form. Now the apophyllite will activate that pineal gland. It stimulates it, it activates it, and that translates into an awakening of more of your psychic senses, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance, all of that good stuff. Um, this really fosters good communication with higher dimensional beings or your higher self in meditation or in dream work. It helps you to be able to hold on to the psychic impressions and information that you're getting and to bring back what's useful in your life now. Um, so it organizes it in that way. And the other thing is 
it helps with just clarity. It's such a nice, clear, sharp stone. It helps you to get clear in your life. Um, and when I'm holding this right now, I mean, it feels like it's vibrating me up into the higher dimensional realms into a more divine place. There's a sense of peace. There's a sense of like relaxation and calming and well-being that this can bring in. So a little vacation from 3D. How about that? That's okay. So when you have this celestial quartz or this apophyllite, mm -hmm. Do you place it on your head? Do you lay down and put it at the top of your head? Um, and does is there a certain size that works better than others? Right. Yeah. So um, what I do, I like to if I like to lie down with my head on a pillow, and um, just yeah, stick it right behind the head. Now, one thing they taught me in my crystal healing class is you can get another like a thinner pillow and stick it behind your head. Um, so you can prop it so that it's almost right in the middle of your head. If you want to be real precise, you can give it a little, a little lift so it's pointing right at the center of your head. Although I think it's still going to have a strong effect, even if it's down, like right at the bottom part of your head. But that's just a tip they gave me in my classes, so I pass it on. Um, now, questions, the questions about the size of crystals. That's a good question. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a general rule, and then I'm going to give you my perspective. So as a very general rule, if you have two of the same kind of crystal and they're the same, okay, you have two crystals, so they're the same kind of crystal um, and they're the same quality, like they have the same clarity and they have the same kind of uh, saturation of color. If you've got one that's bigger in general, that's gonna put out a stronger energy field. Okay, so that's the general rule. However, I haven't always found that to be true. <laughs> Um, I've got to say, there's been times when I found a crystal, like, let me show you. Can I find you? Like this little teeny, teeny, tiny, this little teeny, tiny phenakite right here is little, but its energy field is humongous. I don't know what it is about the life force energy or the crystalline frequency of this particular phenakite, but the energy field is huge, even though it's a little tiny thing. If I stuck this back here at the crown chakra, I think it'd have a big effect. I've also come across giant crystals that are like 200 pounds, you know, that seem to be taking a nap. Like they're just not very activated and they're, 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 they're sleeping, okay? So sometimes size doesn't really matter. So that's where it gets a little bit confusing and you just have to kind of trust your own instinct about how strong a crystal is. Or... Um, if you wanted to get a little more technical about it, I guess you could get a pendulum out and you could, if you're good with a pendulum and you could ask questions, how far does the energy field of this crystal go? Does it go at least two feet? Yes, no. Does it go at least three feet? Yes, no. So you can maybe measure it that way. 